What's up friends of the good mood, this is Money and welcome to a big viewer request right here in War Robots guys with the aphid vortex griffin that you guys wanted to see for quite a long time and I've been sitting down to record a bit of footage with it as you can see clearly here. The first damage wasn't really dealing damage or the first rockets, they were just bringing down the shield on the Haichi there but that was allowing our friend on the other hand to deal damage instead which I think in the end is just as good, just not for our stats, right? But it's a team game so bringing down shields for your friends to work better is definitely worth it. So if you get the chance against Haichi for, Haichi for example with Vortex Aphid, those things work really well in bringing down shields of those guys so you should definitely try to do that when you get the chance. So, we're still doing our uh, thing here, we have a couple of uh, Zeus Furies on the other side that I want to get rid of. For example, this guy here around, uh, you know, behind this wall. And, uh, yo, the Aphid and Vortex were really meant to break him at that spot. <laughs> I really love it, man. There's another one, he doesn't know what's happening there, so boom, 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 boom. And he just lost like 60% of his Fury, Zeus. Now, one or two of you guys might argue and say, hey man, the damage output of these weapons is way too high. Keep in mind, we're using level 12 Mark II all the way here. Um, and maybe you're right, maybe the damage is a little bit high, but consider one thing. Uh, this is not a brawling weapon, it doesn't really have brawling DPS. So if you're standing up against somebody who's actually having a brawling weapon, you will lose with this one, even though you also only have 350 meter brawling range, you know what I mean? And the next thing uh, you need to keep in mind is that as soon as you walk relatively fast, you don't even have to be super fast, a Lancelot using the rush ability can do it, uh, you know, walking in the right angle, you can make this weapon weapon miss completely, miss all its shots. So overall, I think the weapon actually doesn't overperform the Vortex or the Aphid. I think these weapons, they offer a strategic element, which is why I call them the Spec Ops uh, Griffin or so when I use the Vortex or Aphid uh, with, for example, I don't know, Orkins or so. And this right here would be pure Spec Ops with the, <laughs> with the Vortex and Aphid at the same time. Um, but I still would like to hear your thoughts guys. Let me know if you think the weapon is actually totally overperforming and uh, Or if you think hey man, yeah, it can be dodged so easily So it should be powerful when it hits so let me know what you think guys anyways Let's keep going here with our video. Uh, I want to show you guys uh, What happens when somebody attacks you? This is a full brawling griffin with pinata and orkin and I'm not completely chanceless against him here um, Because <laughs> I don't have that much DPS. I just I'm have the, the ability to fight over the obstacles there, but I can't really, you know, compete on a brawling level with a brawling bot. Um, that, however, is, uh, is something that this bot here could do. The Fujin with three times Orkins, which I put now into the hangar. But of course, as always, when I deploy the Fujin with Orkins, some Ansel, uh, Ancelot with, uh, with you know, um, Tarant shows up and uh, destroys my, my moment here. But so far, we're still going. We still have those two rocket-based dash bots on the other side, of which one of them we just got rid of. And this guy is launching his full salvo of Tulumbas. And as soon as the last one hits, I deploy the shield or bring it down and keep walking. We have 160,000 shield energy on the Fujin uh, on level 12 Mark II, which is quite a lot of shielding, guys. Of course, it doesn't help you against Tyrants, right? Um, but with three medium weapons, you can even get through the full Ansel shield on that Lancelot and still deal damage afterwards. So both enemies or both people will have taken substantial damage there. It's actually a fair encounter, if you ask me. And uh, although I still wish the Fujin would get a regenerating shield on the move, which I really think it should be getting, um, I, I still believe the, the, the Fujin can be used quite effectively, but not with all setups. You can run it with Hydras very well, you can run it with Orchids very well. Tarans are also quite cool, um, but it gets crazy when you try to, I don't know, uh, be tricky with it. Maybe some Vortex, I might be able to try that next time, let's see. But let's go and focus on the on the Griffin at hand here, the one that you guys wanted to see. Uh, the three redeemers on the enemy side of that fury had, you know, the same range as I do, so I was unable to fire at him without getting some damage back. But at the same time, I think I outperformed his damage here because he was only able to fire once, and I basically launched my entire salvo. And um, 
Yeah, so far, so good. I was so super surprised not to see anyone taken and see that. I haven't taken da done damage, and I was like, huh? How is that possible? I switched the target and I saw, aha, there was an Ansel shielded bot. So I jumped backwards uh, to have a better impact angle with the vortex and aphids and, uh, and fire them one at a time. So the first two drain, drain the shield, the other two are going to deal damage. Here I made a mistake though, I fired all at once again. The shield was slightly regenerated. It ate all the rockets and hasn't taken any further damage. That's why you should always fire them one at a time when somebody has a shield like this. One, two, three, four. So you can make sure that once the shield drops, the other ones are gonna deal damage, you know? So um, yeah, I made this mistake and I put it in here purposely just to be able to explain that once more. Because uh, I do make mistakes <laughs> just as much as you guys. And uh, I just want to make sure that you guys know this and know, know some of my mistakes as well. And um, yeah, we're still going here. We have only lost like 20,000 health. I don't know how I have been able to survive for that long. Um, and there is this fury over there that I really, really want to get. I was considering to fire to the right, but I think the left side is the better choice now that he's walked to the left and <laughs> there he goes, man. And uh, I think there's one more guy left, the Ardo. I think he also has a Fury. So I'm just sending my rockets flying around a, a little bit sideways, like a, a little banana around the, the building here. I did some damage, but it was clearly not a full hit. I see that my friends are attacking those guys with plasma, so I really don't have to help there. It doesn't make any sense to fire my rockets just to drain the shield, which nobody can use because all my friends were using um, plasma. Now, there's a difference now here, there's Lancelot, I don't know where he came from, I didn't see him at first, uh, using uh, the good old Orcans. If I had seen that before, I would have drained the shield on the enemy so that my Lancelot could have done more. Hmm, that was my fault as well. Anyways, there's something with shields that we have been able to deplete quite well, I think that was a Lancelot with an Ansel. Uh, he's getting even further damage from the Vortex, no wait, the Aphid Pattern that we have sitting sitting to the right of us here. There it is, <laughs> yeah. He's shooting the same target, um, but I think that Lancelot is just clearly protected. And here you can see it, he was standing behind that wall, so yes, he was absolutely protected from our rockets. And as soon as I jumped, you know, that's the thing. If you use a, a bot that hasn't, that it's not like a, a high shield that has an energy shield on top of all the dashing and everything. No, we have no shield. So as soon as we jump and we are in line of sight, we are kind of screwed. I was considering to use the, um, the Galahad here, but of course, how could it ever be different um, that there's a high shield with Orkins coming? nothing I can do. Uh, we already had a Haichi with Orkins before here that killed me, but that guy died. So I was like, okay, cool, he's getting, he's down, so maybe the next one is with Plasma, and then I would have been able to do a lot of stuff against him. But of course, the next Haichi has also Orkins. Yeah, I and mean, when you bring up a Galahad or a Garrett and you have Orkins times three on the other side, <laughs> you can just kiss your butt bye-bye. <laughs> Um, so also something I want to make a separate video of you can see here guys is the Spectre with Tarans I am usually not running these super powerful weapons on the Spectre because I think the bot itself is already way too powerful So I'd rather focus on fun setups like Punishers or so um, But I also want to at least make a video of it So I'm running it recently here to be able to record a little bit of footage for you guys And uh, this is one of the mo moments here uh, It won't probably come up as a video now because I've already shown it here I don't want to give you double <laughs> double stuff um, but yeah so I'm let just so you know I'm recording some footage with this thing trying to get you guys um, yeah a mark 2 level 12 version of the tyrant specter just to know how it performs um, yeah and I'm here I'm against three guys on the other side here I'm making another mistake here I see the death button Griffin and I totally underestimate again how he can just splash around the corner uh, I was trying to focus the guy to the right here with his one HP uh, but I totally stretched this and, and screwed it up and the other guy with the Komiho was a one-hit kill if I had focused him really quickly I would have been able to kill him much quicker too and uh, here I should have reloaded my Tarans man I'm making one mistake over the other <laughs> I should have reloaded my Tarans and I jumped in with no weapons reloaded. What the heck, Manny? Are you playing this game for the first time right now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm capable, you know, what I'm doing good here is bypassing the shield on the Lancelot, not even going to go through his shield, just completely aiming at the weak spot to the right and to left. So I killed the full Lancelot without having to go through the shield. This is something you can only do when you're very close to your enemy, right? That doesn't work further away than 40 meters or so. 
um, because then the target, the auto targeting, uh, kicks in and you can't manually target any weak spots anymore. Um, you can see here the Fujin with Orkins. I, I might also do a video on that because I actually like this combo very much. It is very powerful and it's strong. It, like, it's competitive with some of the more powerful bots, even like an Ancelot, it's a very powerful machine. But you can kind of counter it in many situations with this setup here. And um, yeah, of course, Orkins. We all know that the damage output of Orkins is insane. But I think that an old bot like the Fujin kind of needs that in order to actually perform. Like if you put... I don't know, if you put Molots on this thing, you won't run any damage output. You just will you will just get dominated by everyone because the bot itself isn't super powerful, so at least you need to try to equip some good weapons to it so that the web bot itself is competitive again. Which is the problem when you put the super powerful weapons on the super powerful bots. The result is just insane, right? Like Orkans times four on the Spectre or four Tarans. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible for the enemy, of course. There's a Rogatka, I knew it was one, so I knew he was gonna jump, I just waited for him to do that. And uh, yeah, this team deathmatch round here was over 1.3 million damage done, not bad round here. Although I have been making quite a good amount of stupid mistakes, <laughs> but you know what, I show you the mistakes nonetheless. I think this is, uh, it, at least it has some entertainment value. You can see down here, very sad Kur Kur Kurdish, Kurdish warrior uh, wants to tank himself down. This footage was recorded during the event, um, so... Uh, the tankers are super active in tanking themselves down just to be able to play in lower leagues and get more rewards for the event out of it. Very sad thing to have because the enemy team has now lost pretty much four bots and at the same time um, they already have like a zero versus six or five stats staying up there you know what I mean this is really bad man this is uh, it's just it's just unsportsmanlike because your team needs you and bailing out like this uh, and just using the one last bot you have as an actual battle bot and then getting killed and then oh, all right fine I dropped my rating this is really really unhealthy for the game for the team and for the fun but you just, you're just gonna see it because these guys wanna play in lower leagues. They wanna dominate with their high-end dash bots against low-level players with patents and Leos. And uh, I guess apparently some of those players actually need that to feel strong. <laughs> if they had a little bit of dignity and skill, they would do that against their own, uh, against the same powerful bots, and then try to compete with their own. But yeah, some people are not meant for competition, it seems. So, uh, we're still killing him here. He's out of the game now. Uh, I, I just took him out focused him until he was down. Although it is hard to kill an Haeshi or or a um or or also Bulgazari Komiho, killing them with aphids and vortex is a really hard thing to do, guys. Just so you know, right? Um because they can first off they can dash and secondly, as you can see here, even if they don't dash just the pure walking speed is already fast enough to kind of dodge the 100% damage of the weapon. I don't know why, but um, yeah, they have some kind of immunity almost to Vortex Aphid weapons, as if they really need more powers, right? <laughs> um, this one Griffin was jumping away at four, 500 meters range, and my Vortex and Aphids were following him, attacking him and actually hitting him in mid-air, because he was kind of just flying mid, like straight away, and the impact angle was having a, no problem with this, and that was cute, pretty cool. <laughs> um, this Haichi there dropped the shield by me, but, you know, it doesn't really work well, or it doesn't really help because um, no one, I think, was firing rockets at him. So if somebody would have fired like Punishers or like projectile weapons, kinetic weapons, then uh, yeah, they, that, that draining of the shield would have been very helpful here. But he did, you know what, I think I think somebody might have actually done damage. That Lancelot to the right, Kampfstern Metos with Orc and Thunder, he, he went down so quick, maybe he actually had some benefit from my taking down the sheets. I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm just speculating at this point. But it could be, right? Yep, that griffin to the right, um, just so you guys, I'm just going back quick, quickly here. Uh, I reacted very fast when I see this griffin jump. You can see him jumping, so I jumped towards him, waited, and fired when I knew he would be landed when my uh, rockets came in. I did that because I know when a griffin jumps, and you launch your rockets then, you basically deal full damage. He has no, he lands and he's kind of stuck for a second to walk, and that means all the aphids and vortex will deal a 100% direct hit. And uh, and that is very valu valuable, especially against a griffin that could usually jump away. 
And then you can use the jump against him, right? With these weapons. I was trying to get him before he jumps, but he already did. And that, that's how, how, I, how he dodged most of the rockets now. And, uh, you know, that's why it's really, really good to use the jump to actually hit him extremely well. I thought those two rockets would be killing him. And then I switched to the other targets. And then I was amazed to see that he's still alive somehow. I don't know why. Uh, he should have been hit really well and should have been died, uh, dead there. But he didn't. He, he didn't die, but... Yo, this is my last round here with the Vortex Aphid Griffin. I gave this video to you guys. Hopefully, you, you liked it. Um, and it's a setup that every one of you guys can run as well. Uh, and it certainly is a lot of fun to run that. Um, let me just say at the end here, guys, that I wasn't... You know, some people are saying in the comment section that, hey, he's not actually playing. Like, uh, well, I am actually playing this, but... Sometimes I have a like I'm doing post commentary, right? I record the gameplay footage I cut it together to have the compressed action based video for you guys And then I do my commentary over this so you guys don't see the unnecessary Just walking across the map with no action So you have a compressed action field and web uh, and map video and still my commentary and that doesn't work with live commentary so well So I do it later uh, sometimes that's how it happens just so you guys know why my fingers are here and the bot is still moving <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. It's brutal as a man can hit for more. Thanks for bearing with me. You guys are awesome. As always, Money Gaming signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs>